Coming up on OWL TV News. Need a ride to the mall? Maybe you want to go to the beach, but you don't have a car or the money for a zip car. Well, FAU has the solution. Also, get details on the new no credit policy. FAU's academic version of the get out of jail free card. And later, we find out what's on students' minds with Street Talk. Hello everyone and welcome to OWL TV News. I'm Jennifer Carney. And I'm Kimberly Castellanos. Thank you for joining us. FAU may not be known for its on-campus community, but the small percentage of students who live here know what it's like not having a ride to get groceries or being stuck inside on a Friday because you don't have a car. But FAU is changing all of that with their free shuttle service, Safe Ride. OWL TV's Brittany Silva and Taylor Bergman no more. Hey Owls, I'm Brittany Silva. And I'm Taylor Bergman, here with OWL TV News. We're standing outside of the Atlantic Shuttle, which is FAU's new transportation service that's offered to all students across the university. Taylor and I had a vision that we could make Boca a safer community after one of our friends unfortunately got into some legal trouble. And we noticed that all other universities had a transportation service to get their students safely around their communities. So what we did is we brought our idea over to student government. Let's hear from our student body vice president to hear what he has to say about FAU's new addition. It was like a dream come true. This was something that Mike and I had uh, advocated for when we ran for student body president and vice president originally. And when Taylor and Brittany reached out to us with all the information, we knew this was something that we couldn't pass up on. We quickly sat down and looked over our paperwork and knew this was something that FAU student government should fund. We knew that once we had this going for us, we knew that it was going to be kind of difficult to get the administration on our side. It's not every day that you have such a big project like this that you try to pitch to them. So we knew that we had to get all of our information together and ready for our one-time try to pitch it to the administration. Student body president Michael Cepeda describes to us his hardest struggle to get the Atlantic shuttle up and riding. The hardest obstacle was getting people to realize how uh, strong and how impactful this program is going to be. Uh, this is not only for students in this campus, but students across the entire university. Um, it's going to be a program that highlights FAU as a uh, first choice school for students that offer safe programming, uh, weekend programming that is beneficial to not only the resident student, but the commuter student. Uh, this program uh, also puts a, a light at FAU saying that we're taking our responsibility with students who go out and you know, uh, partake in, in going to clubs and bars. Having an alternative uh, to not drink and drive and go on the shuttle for free, um, to my knowledge, we haven't had any uh, disasters happen, and we're thankful for that, but we don't want to wait for one and then have this program start right after that. We want to prevent any disaster from happening. Um, every student across uh, our, our campuses is valuable, and we would hate to lose anybody for something so silly like that. This has been Taylor Bergman. And I'm Brittany Silva here with OWL TV News. We, we hope to see you on the Atlantic Shuttle soon. OWL TV, the University Press, and OWL Radio bands together for the first time to promote student media at FAU and the Traditions Plaza with live music, pizza, and movie tickets. Here's a preview in case you missed it. Hey OWL, this is Kimberly Castellanos from OWL TV here at the Traditions Plaza where University Press, OWL Radio, and OWL TV came together for an event to promote student media. Students lined up in the Traditions Plaza for FAU Student Media Day hosted by OWL TV, OWL Radio, and the University Press. While there, students enjoyed music provided by OWL Radio's DJ Josh Way and DJ Redwood. The UP set up a photo booth and all three media outlets gave out pizza and merchandise. We spoke to some FAU students about what brought them to the event. The music, of course, it's fun. I love loud music, I love partying, so pretty cool. I love reading it, and I was talking about like the Relay for Life and see if they can put that in there too. It's cool. You get to see everything that's going on. Uh, I mean, I was coming from class and I heard some great music playing in the in a breezeway area and then talking about free stuff, and I was like, mm, why not? Let me just come out and check out. And then I followed the uh, social networks, the OWL TV, OWL Radio. And it was pretty nice stuff. They're giving away pretty good stuff. You know, t-shirts, um, candy bags. I got my goodie bag right here. So I'm all happy. I'm all happy. Well, you can't, you can't beat that. For OWL TV News, this has been Kimberly Castellanos. 
Since Chick-fil-A opened in January, the fast food company has been on the tips of most students' tongues. But a former Chick-fil-A employee is asking students to eat less chicken after an incident that involved a student employee buying what appeared to be a homeless man's lunch, only to be forced to watch the man be escorted out by police for what she deems was no reason at all. FAU student Cassie Donnarumma explains what happened on Facebook, saying, the man did not threaten anyone, disturb the store in any way, or show any nudity. So why did our manager call the police on a man who could no, in no way defend himself against five police officers? Cassie was fired from her job after standing up to her manager. Owl Radio's Gabby Alvarado, along with the University Press's Max Jackson, spoke to FAU Police Chief Lowe about the incident. When we were talking about the term unwanted guest, did mm -hmm. that come from the manager? Or yes. Did, okay. So it, it that's not a that's not a word that or that's not a phrase that we would typically okay. use, referring to people unless we're told this person is here and they're not wanted. We don't want them here. Okay. That's what renders them an unwanted guest. Okay. Oh, he said he 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 wanted he had asked him to leave and he wouldn't leave, and that was you know that was the purpose of our you know so, of us being there. For the entire Facebook post by Cassie, visit Owl TV's Twitter page at. FAU underscore OWL TV. And you can see the entire interview with Chief Lowe on youtube.com slash FAU OWL TV. In honor of Black History Month, FAU's Black Student Union hosted an open discussion panel called The Gray Area that focused on issues and race that aren't always simply black and white. OWL TV's Brooke White was there to capture the event. The Black Student Union put on an event titled The Gray Area. The event began with the BSU president, Cedric Brazel, asking everyone to fold a piece of paper and put a hole in the middle. The moral of the exercise was that everyone is made the same, but they all have their differences. This was one issue students came to discuss along with others, such as stereotypes, cultural differences, and black history. Here, one student speaks about what he thought one of the most important issues talked about at the event was. One issue today that was talked about that I feel was really important was who Black History Month is for. We talked about, you know, the origin of it. And originally it was called African American History Month. And that's a, I think that plays a really big part in why some people feel like they don't really have a right to celebrate black history, um, especially if their family isn't African American. But uh, personally, I feel like, you know, if you're black and you want people to respect your culture and know a little bit more, why not celebrate it even if you're not technically African American? The Gray Area had a great turnout. Here, Parrish talks about the positive effects the event had on students. The result the event had, you know, um, this is an event put on by the Black Student Union. We are a group of, you know, black college students and we had so many other people like us in the room and it wasn't on a violent platform, it wasn't on anything negative. We sat in here and we had a discussion uh, we weren't out in the street, we weren't doing anything negative. We were doing something positive, uplifting each other, and at the end of the day, that's what it's about. I hope you enjoy the discussion. You can check out the Black Student Union at their next event, held February 24th, at their annual hair and fashion show. This has been Burke White with Al TV News. Back to the studio. Coming up after the break, we ask students about this week's trending topics. Also, find out why you can now fail a class without ruining your GPA. And don't forget to stay tuned for entertainment news and sports highlights. Welcome back, Owls. FAU settled in court recently over the murder of a paid escort back in 2011 by former FAU police officer Jimmy Dacko. Though the university chose to settle instead of going to trial, FAU media relations Lisa Metcalf told the Sun Sentinel that it isn't an admission of guilt. Rather, it costs less to settle than going to trial. For more details on this story, you can visit theupressonline.com. Ever wish you had a get-out-of-jail-free card after bombing a final exam and failing the class? Your wish is Florida Atlantic's command. Starting this semester, students will receive no credit for classes failed, so it doesn't affect their GPA. College is all about self-discovery, but at some point in our lives, most of us struggle in determining our major. How many times have you changed your major so far? I haven't. Three times. Uh, once. When undecided about your major, FAU's no credit policy is the perfect remedy. The, the, the no credit policy basically is an opportunity for students, uh, essentially in their first and second years, which is where it's primarily focused, 
and on the IFP courses. It allows students to, in fact, discover what their major might be. And so the no credit policy offers an additional opportunity for students not only to, to investigate or experience or discover those new areas that they might be interested in, but it also doesn't punish them if in fact once they find out that er that area is not something they desire for the rest of their college career, that it won't hurt them in terms of their transcript. The no credit policy may not affect student transcripts, but it influences their decisions. I, I think it gives people a chance to really figure out what they like, what their interests are, and if they don't do well in a class, they can switch and find something that fits them better. It's nice just to be able to drop a class whenever if you don't like it and then you can just pick up another one. Freshman forgiveness and the no credit policy both assist students in their academic success, but the goal of these policies differ. For the forgiveness policy to apply, that student has to take that course over again in order to get a better grade in order to have the forgiveness policy work. Remove that from their transcript unless take it over and over and over again. Now the, the no credit policy allows the student if they discover that course that they took as an IFP course um, was not in their liking at all, they can take a different IFP course. So they're not forced to take that same course over and over again that they discovered that they really hated for whatever reason or did not do well in. You can be an undergrad or a professor and learn to like the no credit policy. I think it's great. I think that it's a really useful policy. I wish I had had it when I was a freshman or a sophomore. It would save me a lot of credits. Because it only can help you. Because if you, if you fail a course, then it gives you that sort of um, you know, second pass or second chance at it. Um, minimizes the hit to your GPA. So why would you not want that? I definitely think I would have liked that. I'm Ashley LG. Now back to the studio. The free speech lawn in front of the Social Science Building was taken over by students on a mission to enlighten fellow students about the dangers of genocide this week. OWL TV's Gigi Arisma has all the details. Hey OWLs, I'm Gigi Arisma from OWL TV News. FAU students received a surprise visit from Genocide Awareness Project sponsored by AbortionKnow.org. FAU students gathered on the free speech lawn to express their views. A perfect world will be where no abortions ever happen again, but we have to deal with the reality that we are in, and that reality includes women who have their bodies being taken over and they don't want it. Volunteers traveled from Canada to engage in conversation. The FAU community also has their own student-run organization called Students for Life who are there to support the event. So we want to raise awareness about this injustice and of course we do that not only by showing what abortion looks like but also by engaging in respectful dialogue. What our role on a campus is to educate, be a resource and to just be a witness to life on campus. Many men and women don't know what their options are when they are expecting a baby and we are here to give them information of what the baby looks like in the womb, their development, as you can see behind us, and we also inform them of other options instead of abortion. For me, what really sparked me for getting involved in the pro-life movement is seeing the pictures that stand behind me today. To see that there are thousands of children in the United States every single day that are decapitated, dismembered, and disemboweled at the hands of abortion. While representatives of the campaign expressed the desire to spread awareness, not all students supported their welcome. I think that this is a poor execution and it promotes violence against women who are seeking to either get an abortion or when they walk into the Planned Parenthood, you don't even know if that's why they're there. They could be there looking to see other options. So I'm very much against the abortionno.org and their presence on campus I think will only hurt them more. The two-day event at the Boca Raton campus sparked an open debate. However, students from both sides were able to voice their opinions respectfully. This is Gigi Arisma with OWL TV News. For more details on these stories and others, you can visit upressonline.com or tune in to OWL Radio's news show at soundcloud.com and search OWL Radio News. A college campus is nothing without student life, and OWL TV's Madison Bakich knows that. So she set out to find out what random students think about this week's trending topics. Hi guys and happy Oscar weekend. We're out here playing my grandma's favorite game when she's not walking around the mall. That's right, we're playing the 2015 Oscar Relay Race. Guys, we're out here with, what's your name? Mosey. Mosey, tell us a little about yourself. 
Um, civil engineer major. Okay, great. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna be playing the Oscar relay race. You're gonna answer a question. I'm gonna give you the baton. Here you go. Okay, so you're, I'm gonna ask you a question. We're gonna run together to the next guy, and then you, know, you pass the baton to him. Okay, so you ready? Yeah. All right, let's go. All right. Okay, in Whiplash, before being nominated for Whiplash, what other films was J.K. Simmons's? A. Juno. B. Sisterhood 2: Back in the Habit. Or C. Schindler's List. Hey, yes, Juno, pass the baton to him. Yeah. Okay, okay, hi, what's your name? Uh, ben. Okay, good. All right, an interstellar. All right, an interstellar, Matthew McConaughey and Anne Hathaway are stuck in space. Uh, in real life, which would Matthew McConaughey prefer? Being lost in space forever or on a road trip with Anne Hathaway talking to him for a week? Road trip with Anne Hathaway. Oh, God. You gotta keep running back and forth until you get it right. Okay, which one would he prefer? Being lost in space forever or a road trip with Anne Hathaway for a week talking? Yes, correct. All right, oh, run the baton to the next person. Come on, we're running out of time. The world depends on you. Okay, hi, what's your name? I'm Yoshi. Hi, Yoshi. Okay, your question is Birdman. True or false, Emma Stone was handpicked for her role in Birdman because she has chicken legs. True or True. false? True, pass the baton. Hi, what's your name? Ashley OG. Ashley, okay. Ashley, you're Gone Girl, so Gone Girl. Gone Girl was a film starring Rosamund Pike that inspired women everywhere to patiently wait to get revenge on their cheating scumbag husbands by fall, fall by faking their own murder. Who wrote this plan? I mean, um, film. A, Jonah Hill, B, Jillian Flynn, or C, all of Larry King's ex-wives? Jillian Flynn. Yes, correct. Pass the baton. <laughs> okay, Boyhood, what's your name? Jackie. Jackie, hi Jackie. Okay, what is Boyhood about? A, a small urban neighborhood run only by boys. B, the l young life story of Hilary Swank. Or C, a coming of age uh, drama written and directed by Rin Richard Linklater. Coming of age story? See. Okay, pass the baton. Hello. What's your name? Michael. Michael. You're American Sniper, Michael. Okay, so American Sniper. In what uh, category was American Sniper... Okay, we gotta keep running. We gotta run. We have a relay race to win. Okay, in what category was American Sniper snubbed? A, Bradley Cooper for Best Actor. B, uh, Clint Eastwood for Best Director. Or C, Sienna Miller for Most Realistic Blinking. A. Okay, A, Bradley Cooper for Best Actor, B, Clint Eastwood for Best Director, or C, Sienna Miller for Most Realistic Blinking. B. Yes, correct, okay, run, run, we have to get to the next person. Give it to her! <laughs> Hello, what's your name? Hi, Jordan. Jordan, okay, Jordan, you are into the woods, I love your hair, your Meryl Streep, okay. So into the woods, this is the final question, so if you get this wrong, we have to start all the way at the beginning, so don't get it wrong. Okay, it's a hard question, all right. What was the best, you ready? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Game face. What was the best part of End of the Woods? A, Meryl Streep. B, Meryl Streep. C, Meryl Streep. D, Meryl Streep. Or E, all of the above. Oh my God, I, all of the above. Yay! Everyone wins, woo! Congratulations, Jordan. You get a balloon animal. Yay, can I have my hair? Sure. Yes. Oh, my shirt is still on. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. This was the Oscars 2015 Relay Race. And now, Owls, we're tossing it over to Alexis Pena, who will highlight the most important news from this episode in American Sign Language. and I'm here with the Blue Wave Sports Show. We're here at the Borough to watch our Lady Owls battle against Louisiana Tech. 
The Owls had a dominant first half, shooting 54% from the field and starting the game on a 6-0 run. Junior guard Morgan Robinson gave the team a 19-point lead with a steal and a layup. During the second half, the Owls' defense did not come with the same intensity. They gave up 58% shooting and allowed for four out of five three-point shots made from the opposing side. The Owls missed their last five shots, while Louisiana Tech made each of their last five to win the game. Our highest scorer of the game was Shanice Bailey with a score of 24 points. Here's Coach Kelly Lewis Jay with her thoughts on the game. Oh, tough loss. Um, down the stretch, we made some some bad decisions. Uh, our fouls, our turnovers, that's something that we have to learn from and get better. Do I like the way we played? Yes, I do. I wish it could have gone the other way, but there's some things we have to clean up at the end. It was a devastating loss as our Lady Owls fell short with a score of 73 to 68. Now back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Taylor. Hey, Owls. Joy Melendez here with Owl TV's Gigi Arisma. Welcome to Entertainment News. This past week got pretty seamy with the theater release of the novel-based movie, Fifty Shades of Grey. The story follows the relationship between a college graduate, Anastasia Steele, and a young business mogul, Christian Grey. The two meet when Anastasia interviews Grey for the college newspaper. The story takes you to the underground world of BDSM where they engage in erotic scenes. While the movie is being criticized by doctors, so far, the film has grossed over $300 million, breaking the box office record for being the biggest February hit and President's Day weekend release. Wow. In other news, this past Valentine's Day, Lady Gaga was given more than a heart made of chocolate. The singer received a heart made of diamonds from her longtime boyfriend, Taylor Kinney. Of course, Gaga said yes. She took to Instagram to show off her new bling. He gave me his heart on Valentine's Day and said yes. Oh, that's cute. Congratulations, Gaga. In other celebrity couple news, word on the street is that Rihanna has been getting rather close to Leonardo DiCaprio. But sources now confirm that the 27-year-old pop star is actually dating his good friend, Richie Akiva. And in music news, at this year's Grammys, Album of the Year was awarded to alternative rock artist Beck. Kanye West jokingly ran up on stage during Beck's acceptance speech to poke fun at his 2009 VMA snub at Taylor Swift. But I guess the tension is no longer there since Kanye and Taylor have been spotted grabbing coffee together to discuss their new collab. Rosie O'Donnell's recent departure from the daytime talk show, The View, was said to have derailed negotiations for her co-star, Whoopi Goldberg, who was set to star in a new ABC primetime series. However, insiders say O'Donnell's exit has not impacted Goldberg in any way, as it has been confirmed she will star in the upcoming pilot, Dolores and Germain, which films in New York, where she already currently films The View. Look out, Pretty Liars fans. A is coming for you. <laughs> well, not really. But PLL executive producer Marlene King has tweeted that come March 24th, the mask is off and the hoodie is down. Fans will finally find out who Big A is on the season final episode. King says viewers will know who A is while the girls remain clueless. That's going to be pretty intense. I know. I can't <laughs> wait. And now that the cold front is gone and the sun is out... Spring Break 2015 is approaching fast. So leave the jackets behind and grab your beach ball. And now, let's, let's fly, fly back, back to, to the, the anchors. anchors. Thanks, Joey. Well, Owls, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on Owl TV News. And don't forget, you can always stay informed by following us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.